In electrified railway systems, a distribution grid transfers the energy from stationary substations to moving trains. Typically, this is done by either a conductor rail at ground level or overhead contact lines. In almost all designs of overhead contact lines in the world, the contact wire is supported by a secondary wire which forms a catenary shape. This so-called messenger wire is used to keep the contact wire as level along the track as possible. The droppers are placed in between the connect both wires. The electrical coupling between the contact wire and the train is achieved using a current collector or pantograph. The reliability of the energy transfer system is primarily depending on the quality of the coupling between pantograph and the overhead wire. This electrical coupling is achieved by mechanical contact which relies on the dynamical interaction between pantograph and catenary system. The catenary is more complicated than just a single high voltage cable. It contains messenger wires, contact wires, droppers and steady support arms. Let's see why a catenary system needs such a complicated structure. The weight of the high voltage overhead lines causes the cables to sag. In order to have an uninterrupted contact, these cables should be maintained horizontally. It should also be rigid enough to interact in a dynamic way with the pantograph. The solution is to use droppers at specific intervals. These droppers have variable length. The length is calculated based on the different parameters such as the tensioning loads of both the contact and messenger wire and their mechanical characteristic. The catenary system and the pantograph are designed to guarantee a steady flow of electricity into the traction motors of the train. The design procedure should consider the speed and the voltage of the train among other factors. To provide a stable energy supply, the contact force between catenary and pantograph must be constant and steady. This is hindered by stiffness variations in the catenary system, for example at bridges and tunnels, but also to a lesser extent when passing supports. Therefore, different configurations at catenary suspension systems have been proposed and are used. Almost all designs can be grouped into four main types. The trolley wire is the only type which has a single wire. The other systems all contain a messenger wire connected to the contact wire by the use of vertical droppers. The reason for this more sophisticated design is to decrease the variations into stiffness along the length. When the speed of the train increases, this becomes more important as this more sophisticated design are required, as can be seen in the figures. The pantograph is the device mounted on top of the train which extracts the energy from the catenary system. When the pantographs make contact with the catenary, it is if you plug the train into a circuit. But how does this work? The pantograph is a system which contains articulated arms. It can unfold and extend along the vertical axis. The pantograph pushes gently against the catenary. The gentle force that is necessary to lift the device is often established by air pressure. If the contact force is too low, the two can lose contact very easily, which is unwanted. However, a too high contact force will increase the wear of the system. At the top, you can see the horizontal part of the pantograph, which is called the head of the pantograph. The head is made of carbon strips. The number and size of these strips depend on the type and magnitude of the current that is going to be transmitted. For current day systems, the term pantograph is actually a misnomer as the actual pantograph shape is not used anymore. A lateral stagger motion is applied in all 
catenary structures in order to evenly wear the contact strips of the pantograph. This can be easily seen from the perspective of the pantograph. Differences can be found between the alignment of the messenger and the contact wire. They can be mounted parallel to each other, where they both describe a stagger motion or the messenger wire is aligned with the track and only the contact wire follows a stagger motion, which you can see in the vi video. When the messenger wire remains in position, the differences in horizontal position between the messenger wire and the contact wire makes the droppers are slightly angled. This angle is in the droppers makes the system less prone to lateral deflections due to wind. Instead of using a resilient overhead line, it is also possible to collect energy from the rails, which requires a third rail. Because third rail systems present electric shock hazards close to the ground, the use of high voltage is not considered safe. A very high current must therefore be used to transfer adequate power. This results in high resistive lo losses and thus the system requires relatively closely spaced feed points, electrical substations. For this reason, this system is only used for low speed light rail systems. The electrified rail threatens electrocution of anyone wandering or falling onto the tracks. This can be avoided by using platform screen doors or the risk can be reduced by placing the conductor rail on the side of the track away from the platform when allowed by the station layout. The end ramps of conductor rails where they are interrupted or change sides presents a practical limitation on speed due to the mechanical impact of the shoe. Therefore, 160 km an hour is considered to be the upper limit of practical third rail operation.